in this third part of today's lecture, what I want to do is actually talk a little bit about a graphical interpretation of coordinates and bases in the case of R2. And I, I want to kind of give you a different way of thinking about what you do when you plot points in R2. This is something that you're doing in calculus. And usually you plot points in R2 relative to the standard bases E1 and E2. So I've drawn E1 and E2, and I should probably have graph paper here, but E1 and E2, right, define a grid. And this is kind of poorly drawn here. Here we go. Oh, that's a little bit better. So I'll make a grid from this information. And how is this grid done? Well, this is 2 times E1. This is 3 times E1. Over here would be 4 times E1 and so on. And this would be 2e2, this would be 3e2, and so on. So we have all these vectors here, and it's not the nicest grid, but hopefully you can see, see the point. So we have a grid given from e1 to e2. So you're kind of taking the vector e1, adding it to 2e2, and you could add uh, 2 times e1, and then you could add e2, and you end up in this spot, and so on. So now let's say we look at the vector The vector 1, 3, when we usually plot it, right, it would, vector 1, 3 would be right here, this green arrow. And the vector 1, 3 is at the point 1, 3 in the grid. Described by the vectors E1 and E2. And this is really what the, the coordinates relative to a basis are telling us. Because we're taking our vector 1, 3 and say, OK, write it with respect to your basis E, which is the standard basis. And as we noted, this gives you vac 1, 3. And this tells you where to plot the vector brought with respect to this basis. Where to plot vector with respect to this basis. Okay. So it may help if we look at it maybe a different example. This is kind of the standard case, but let's say instead of E1 and E2, we decide to, we're going to use a different basis for R2. So a different basis for R2 is the vector 1, 0 and 1, 2. You can check that they're linearly independent. It's a little, maybe you may not see right away that it spans, but hopefully you trust me that it does span. This. Okay, so we're given two vectors, and I plotted them here. B1 is at the bottom, and B2 is this one pointing out. And what we can do with those vectors is now use them to draw a grid. So draw a grid with these vectors. Okay, so the grid would now look like this. So hopefully you, you see what I mean by a grid. I'm using kind of this parallelogram as my basis, and then I'm tiling the the whole plane with that parallelogram. So I end up with something that looks like this. And that's not too neat, but hopefully you get the idea. So I get my whole grid like this. Okay, so you start with this initial uh, two vectors, they define a parallelogram, and then you're tiling your whole plane with that information. Now we saw that the vector 5, 4 with respect to the B coordinate is equal to 3, 2. So what does that mean is the vector 5, 4 is drawn to the point 3, 2. So where would 3, 2 be in this grid? So 1, 2, 3, 2. Okay, so it would be right here. So you can think of this vector as 5, 4 in the standard uh, basis, but it's also the vector 
three two in, with respect to this new basis. Okay, so it's drawn to three, uh, drawn to three two, and let me just finish the statement here in the grid. described by B1 and B2. Okay, and let me just add some more notation here or information. Since the B coordinate of phi four is equal to three, two. And this tells us uh, where to plot where to plot the vector with respect to b. Okay, so the idea is that you start with the vector phi four, but maybe you have different bases. So we have the bases b1 and b2, and you wanna know where do you draw it with respect to b? Well, it tells you, well, in the grid formed by b, the vectors in b, you plot it to the point three, two. If I had changed the b1 and b2, I would be changing the b coordinate, but I, I would be describing where this vector ends up in, in terms of the new grid we get. So each basis that you have of R2 gives you a different grid. And when you do the b coordinate of a vector, that's telling you where to plot that vector with respect to that grid. So you could always take phi four, your vector you're interested in, you change the basis and you'd always be changing this part, which is telling you as you change the grid, you have to change where the endpoint is. But you're not changing the vector phi four. Okay, so um, let me just kind of summarize some of these ideas here. Okay, so one thing I wanna write here is um, just reiterating what I just said. So IE, the vector phi four in the normal grid has endpoints, has endpoint, not endpoint, at three, two in the grid defined by B. And you can actually think about what's going on here more generally, which is roughly a set of vectors is a basis if we can make a grid and write every element in terms of this grid. So you could try to think about what's happening in R3. You would have three vectors that would define some three uh, parallel peped, which would kind of tile all of R3. And so those vectors have to be pick so that it fills up the whole space. And then when we write the B coordinates, that's telling you where in the three, the new grid structure that you've made for R3, where that vector ends up. So that's kind of what's going on graphically when we talk about the B coordinates. Okay, so I hope these two pictures here help explain what's going on with respect to B, uh, the B coordinate. So we'll take a pause here and we'll introduce one other concept uh, related to the B coordinate, which is the coordinate map.